Did you know you can transform any robotic sounding voice into a natural sounding AI voice that you can use for lots of cool projects? You can make videos, podcasts, or even help with school projects. And if you get really good at it, you might even earn some money by making voiceovers for others. But first, if your AI voice sounds kind of robotic or not very clear, well, we're going to fix that. First, listen to this basic voice. Sure. Here's a longer version of the sentence. The cat sat quietly on the cozy mat near the fireplace and looked up thoughtfully at the glowing moon shining through the window. Now listen to the improved voice. Sure. Here's a longer version of the sentence. The cat sat quietly on the cozy mat near the fireplace and looked up thoughtfully at the glowing moon shining through the window. Did you hear the difference? The second voice sounds richer and more real, doesn't it? In just a few simple steps, I'll show you how to make any voice sound fuller and more powerful using a free program called Audacity. And guess what? You don't need to buy any extra tools or plugins. This is perfect if you're a podcast, or any project where you want your voice to sound great. Even AI-generated voices can sometimes sound a bit rough or not very high quality. But don't worry, we're gonna fix that together. Let's get started. First, we need to download Audacity. It's a free program that lets you edit sounds and voices. To get it, open your web browser and type Download Audacity into Google. Click on the official Audacity website and download the program. It's a small file, so it won't take long to install. Once you've installed Audacity, Open it up. It might look a little complicated, but I'll guide you through it step by step. Now, we need to bring our voice file into Audacity. Step one, open your favorite text-to-speech AI tool and paste your script, the words you want the voice to say, into the tool. Then, choose a voice actor. This means picking what kind of voice you want. It could be a man or a woman, young or old. I'll pick this one for our example. By the way, I am using a text-to-speech voiceover generated from ChatGPT's responses. If you're just starting out and don't have the budget for human voiceovers, you can combine ChatGPT with Audacity as a cost-effective solution. You'll find the link to the video about all that below this video. Once you've made your choices, click the button to generate the voice. Then, download the audio file to your computer. Then, click and drag it into Audacity. You'll see the sound waves appear on the screen. Let's listen to the original voice. Sure. Here's a longer version of the sentence. The cat sat quietly on the cozy mat near the fireplace and As you listen, you may notice the audio sounds a bit window. rough. To help me find out what the problem is, I turned to ChatGPT. After uploading this file to ChatGPT, here's what I got as the analysis of the audio file. Estimated pitch, approximately 778 hertz. This could indicate a high-pitched tone or voice, depending on the content. RMS loudness, 0.0488, which is relatively low, suggesting that the audio might have limited dynamics and could sound flat. Interpretation, if this audio is a voiceover, the low RMS value might make it sound dynamically flat, lacking variation in loudness. The pitch indicates that there might be a consistent tone or frequency, which could contribute to a monotonous quality if not balanced with vocal dynamics or tonal shifts. Basically saying this audio sounds a bit flat and maybe not very exciting to listen to. Now, to make it sound better, we'll go through these simple steps. Adjusting the recording by normalizing it first, next, removing excess echo while balancing the volume, then fine-tuning equalizers, compressor, and finally normalizing it again. So we'll start with the normalize effect. This effect increases the volume of the recording because raw recordings are often too quiet. To do this, first select the entire track by clicking on the audio track. This will highlight all of it. Once selected, go to the effect menu at the top of the screen, then select volume and compression and click on normalize. In the pop-up that appears, set the peak amplitude to minus three decibels, dB, which is a common standard on many audio platforms. The peak refers to the loudest part of the audio, since we've selected the whole track, we're setting the loudest point of the entire recording to minus 3 dB. Understanding the peak is important because platforms where you share your audio might have rules about how loud it can be. Setting it to minus 3 dB is a good standard, so we'll use that for now. Click Apply. After normalizing, you'll see the waveform, the visual representation of the audio, become taller, indicating that the volume has increased. Sometimes, normalizing might make the audio quieter if it was already louder than minus 3 dB, but that's okay, and we don't need to worry about that right now. After applying normalize, you might notice that noise becomes more apparent in the quiet parts of the recording. 
The next effect we can use is called noise reduction. This effect is optional and depends on whether there is a hissing noise that you can hear when someone is talking. If there is, the noise reduction effect can help reduce it. To use noise reduction, we need to get a small sample of the noise, like a bit of silence where only the noise is present. About half a second or more is enough. You can select this from the beginning of the recording or anywhere else where there's only background noise. After selecting this part of the audio, click on Effect again, select Noise Removal and Repair, and then click on Noise Reduction. The Noise Reduction pop-up will appear. Noise Reduction works in two steps. In the first step, we tell Audacity what the noise we want to remove sounds like by selecting the sample and clicking on Get Noise Profile. Then, we need to select the part of the audio where we want to remove the noise, usually the whole track. So select the entire track, go to Effect, and open the Noise Reduction pop-up again. We will now perform step two of the noise reduction process. Here, there are three sliders that let us adjust how much noise reduction we want. Setting all the sliders to six is usually best because it removes the noise without changing the sound quality too much. If the noise is very loud, we can set the top slider to 12, but too much noise reduction can make the audio sound harsh and unpleasant to listen to. In this case, I'll leave it at six and make sure reduce is selected below. After applying noise reduction, the audio should have less hissing noise. Next, let's enhance the sound of your recording by using the Filter Curve EQ in Audacity. First, go to the EQ and Filters menu and select Filter Curve EQ. This tool lets us change the volume of certain sound frequencies, a process called equalization or EQ. By adjusting these frequencies, we can make some sounds louder, a boost, or quieter, a cut. Audacity provides some preset EQ settings in the factory presets. We'll use a modified version of the low roll-off for speech preset. Normally, this setting starts cutting off frequencies from 100 Hz. However, human voices usually start at around 80 Hz and don't go below that, so we'll adjust the roll-off to start from 80 Hz. This means we're removing any frequencies below 80 Hz, which helps eliminate low-frequency noise that isn't part of the human voice. Explaining a more complex EQ setup would take a lot of time right now, so we'll stick with this basic EQ adjustment. Next, we're gonna use a very important effect called the compressor. This effect helps reduce the dynamic range of your audio. Dynamic range means the difference in volume between the loudest and quietest sounds in your recording. If this difference is too big, some parts might be hard to hear. Even though the recording we're working with doesn't have a big difference, using the compressor will make the voice sound smoother and clearer. To apply the compressor, make sure your entire audio is selected. Then click on the effect menu and choose compressor. Please note that we're using the new compressor introduced in Audacity 3.6. If you're using an older version of Audacity, the compressor might look different and you'll need to learn how to set it up. In the compressor window, you'll see a graph with a line. The point where the line changes slope is called the activation point determined by the threshold value. If you increase or decrease the threshold, you'll notice this point moves. Once you've set the threshold, you need to decide how much compression you want by adjusting the ratio. Changing the ratio will make the slope of the line after the activation point steeper or flatter. There are other settings in the compressor that control how it works, but it might be tricky to get them all right at first. I suggest starting with a factory preset. Go to Presets, choose Factory Presets, and select Lead Vocals. Keep in mind that the best compressor settings depend on your audio level and how the voice was recorded, but this is a good general choice. If you want a small amount of compression, you can set the ratio below three. For a moderate amount, like we want here, set the ratio around four. We'll leave the other settings as they are. Once you're happy with the settings, click Apply to add the compression. After applying the compressor, we'll need to normalize the audio again to adjust its peak level. Compression can change the highest volume levels, so normalizing it back to minus 3 dB ensures it stays at the standard level. To do this, go back to the Effect menu, select Normalize, and set the peak amplitude to minus 3 dB. Now the editing is done. Let's listen to the result. Sure. Here's a longer version of the sentence. The cat sat quietly on the cozy mat near the fireplace and looked up thoughtfully at the glowing moon shining through the window. You should notice that the audio sounds smoother and clearer. Finally, we need to save our improved voice file. Go to the File menu at the top, click on Export, then choose Export as WAV or Export as MP3. In the window that appears, choose where you want to save the file on your computer, give it a name like Improved Voice, 
and click save. And that's it. You've just made an AI voice sound more realistic and powerful, all using a free program. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.